Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Rights. Today we're going to be talking about um, The Hollow Heart by Marie... Let's have a check quick joke. Marie Rutkowski. I'm going to have to double check how to pronounce that name because I feel bad. But we're going to be looking at her book, The Hollow Heart, which is the sequel to The Midnight Lie. The Hollow Heart was one of my most anticipated reads of the year, even though I only found out about and read the first book about a week before reading it. One of my friends was very excited about this book coming out and I requested the advanced reader copy on NetGalley without checking that it was a sequel. So I, I had to read The Midnight Live very quickly so I could get onto this one and review it before it came out. But I was obsessed with the first book, I gave it five stars. I haven't written a review yet but I probably will as it will be on my end of the year lists. So The Hollow Heart is narrated by Niram, Sid and a third narrator, so I'm going to split this review into each of their perspectives. The review also contains a few spoilers for what happened at the Midnight Lie, but I don't think there's any for The Hollow Heart, which is the book we are talking about, so let's begin. So first we have Niram. At the end of the Midnight Lie, Niram offered up her heart to the God of Thieves in order to restore her people's memories of their city's history. The Hearthkith who once lived in prison behind the city's walls now realise that many among them are powerful. I did not realise how much I loved Niram for her heart until I experienced her without it. <laughs> um, I had a complicated time with her narration, sometimes even uncomfortable. On one hand I support her wanting to basically roleplay as a god as she uses her powers in this newfound inner strength to seek revenge by any means possible. It can be exciting to see a heroine completely lose touch of herself and to give in to her ambition, and I liked reading the exploration of Niram losing herself and realising that she maybe didn't know who she was in the first place. On the other hand, a lot of her words and actions didn't feel like her and I found myself pining for like old Niram more often than not. Her situation was painful but her actions were more so and I read on being both conflicted and compelled. I also found myself wishing that the absence of Sid in her narrative would lead to a deeper development of the characters who returned from the first book such as whatever like What's her boyfriend called? Is he called like Aiden or something like that? Him. I wanted a, like, a deeper development of all these side characters who came back from the first book, but Niran's plot line felt very central to her quest for vengeance, so the side characters um, remained being side characters and very two dimensional, in my opinion. So, next up, we have my beloved Sid. So while Niram is off doing vengeance, Sid has returned to her home country of Heron, where she must navigate the politics of being a rogue princess who has finally agreed to do her duty. This book and my heart and all of the stars in this review are owned by Sid. In the first book she was confident and untouchable, in this we're introduced to her more serious and vulnerable side as she pines both to love and be loved. Her storyline focuses, it goes down to like two roots that interlap, interchange. One of them is her discovering what caused her mother's ill health. We find out very quickly that she was poisoned, it's not just sickness. So Sid is out to find out who the believed assassin is. And she's also at the same time trying to fix her relationship with both of her parents. As we found out in the first book, she basically just ran away from home for a while. And this is exactly what I wanted for a continuation of her story, and I fell in love with her character all over again. I also want to acknowledge that I had no idea that this duology was set in the same universe or shared the same characters as the original trilogy, which I believe is called The Winner's Curse. And I did not know this, because as I said at the start, I also didn't know this was a sequel at one point. <laughs> So I just want to praise the author for creating something that didn't make me feel as if I was missing out on something else. Because I know that the characters, Sid's parents, are the characters from the original trilogy. 
and that will be a great thing for fans of all of her works to read but I didn't feel like I was missing out something it was all very well explained so I was very up to date I knew what was happening it was all good but I will be reading the original trilogy as soon as possible just so I can maybe appreciate it more the third narrator of this book is a character known as just the god until the final few moments and it took until those final few moments for me to realise what their role was in this narrative. The majority of the chapters were dedicated to telling like the backstories of the characters and the history of the island that were hinted about in the first book. But there wasn't time for those things to be developed as a lot of the action in that book happens in the final, maybe like final third, maybe even final 20% of the book and that's the same for this book as well. So this god was a wonderful storyteller actually, just letting us know things that happened before the first book, before the Winner's Curse trilogy. Everything that we kind of got told about but didn't get enough detail, especially as me, someone who loves detail and history. I really actually liked this guy's chapters, even though I know a lot of other reviewers didn't or didn't find it useful to the story. We learn more about the beginnings of the island before the gods fled, we learn about Niram's parentage, and there's a few more moments about Raven's life that aren't essential to the narrative, but they are just nice to have as extra information. So these three storylines, Sid's, Niram's and the gods, don't merge until around 70%, maybe later, of the way into the book. This very disjointed structure is the main thing that stopped me giving the book the same 5 star rating that I gave to The Midnight Lie. I was switching like, back and forth between these three seemingly unrelated narratives was quite jarring for me. It also meant that the first half of the book felt very slow paced and drawn out and that this very eventful finale felt rushed and like kind of squashed into a lot less than it could have been and it was told by the most convenient narrator rather than the most impactful narrator in my opinion again. Overall I would give this book, well I did give it four stars on Goodreads but now I'm thinking it's maybe more like a 3.5 now that I'm thinking about how this switching back and forth and Niram's character in this book kind of didn't vibe well with me. However, it was imperfect, but it was still wonderful in more places than I can list. This review was focused on these three specific narratives, but there are so many more good things I can say about this book. I loved learning more about this world and the history and the magic system, and that was a delight. As well as the exploration of compulsory heterosexuality and being a lesbian, both things which I think are not, um, they're not very common to read about in fantasy from what I've read personally. The writing style was very simple and effective as it was in the first book, but I did feel very unsatisfied with the ending. I also did miss the relationship between Sid and Niram, as that is the thing that made me fall in love with The Midnight Lie, as in this book they do not reunite until very close to the end. So if you were reading this book for more of their relationship content, you're, you're not going to get it. <laughs> You're gonna get crumbs right at the end. But yeah, I think I'll give this book 3.5 stars. It was very good, but it was, I had some flaws. So that's all I have to say about this. I think this book comes out on September 9th. So we'll see if I can get this video edited up by then. If not, I hope you enjoy this book as it's out. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.